Here we're going to look at a quick problem from the AIME, the 1991 edition. So this is a mathematics competition in the United States. So our goal is to find out how many rational numbers, which we'll write as P over Q, satisfy these three following properties. First, P over Q is between 0 and 1. So that means P and Q are both positive and Q is going to be bigger than P and the GCD of P and Q is equal to one. So in other words, they're in lowest terms. And finally, P times Q equals 20 factorial. Okay, so I'm not gonna provide some hints because I think I would maybe give it away, but if you wanna pause the video right now and give it a go, feel free to. So to get started, we're gonna take 20 factorial and we're gonna write it as a product of primes with the appropriate exponents. And in fact, we don't actually need to know the exponents to create a correct solution to this problem, but I'll just include them for thoroughness. So here we have 20 factorial is equal to two to the 16 times three to the six times five cubed times seven squared times 11 times 13 times 17 times 19. Okay, good. So there's a trick to count up the number of times two divides into 20 factorial. So first of all, it's the number of even numbers between one and 20 plus the number of multiples of four between one and 20, plus the number of multiples of eight between one and 20, and so on and so forth. And that's kind of the game that you can play for all of these prime factors. Okay, great. So now we wanna use this prime factorization to construct a rational number in lowest terms that has this property. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll set P equal to the following. So it'll look a lot like 20 factorial, so it'll be two, two to the 16, but then we're gonna include an extra exponent here, A1, and then we're gonna do that for all of these primes. So three to the six to the A2, five to the three to the A3, seven squared to the A4, 11 to the A5, 13 to the A6, 17 to the A7, and then finally 19 to the A8. Good. But given that we're trying to get this factorization so that P times Q equals 20, we need this P to be divisible by 20 factorial. So what that means is the only logical choices for our AI numbers are zero or one. So here we'll take AI to be zero or one, and that will imply that 20 factorial is divisible by P. In other words, P divides 20 factorial. But if P divides 20 factorial, that means 20 factorial divided by P is a natural number, and that's exactly what we're going to set Q equal to. So we'll set Q equal to 20 factorial over P, and then by that discussion we just had, that's a natural number. And Q has a similar factorization to P, except for the fact when the exponents in the primes for P are zero, they're one for Q and vice versa. Okay, great. So now what we want to notice is by construction, we have two facts. So first of all, P times Q equals 20 factorial. So that's pretty obvious because we have P times 20 factorial over P. And then next, we have the GCD of P and Q is one. In other words, P and Q are co-prime. And that's because they don't share any prime factors because of the way that we constructed them. Okay, great. Now the next thing that we wanna do is consider a set and the set is like a bigger version of the set of numbers that kind of solve our problem. In fact, it's gonna be all positive numbers instead of all numbers between zero and one. So we'll write it like this. So S is gonna be equal to the set P over Q such that, so first of all, P and Q are positive. And then next, we have the GCD of P and Q is one, and then Finally, we have P times Q equals 20 factorial. Okay, good. So what we can see by our construction up here is that we really only have a choice for the numerator, in other words, P, and then Q is forced by that choice of P, which tells us we have a one-to-one -one correspondence, in other words, a bijective map 
from our choices on the exponents. In other words, the Cartesian product of eight copies of the set 0, 1, and this is going to be mapping 1 to 1 and on to, to our set S. And so we can describe this map pretty easily. So notice this map is just going to be A1 up to A8 gets mapped to um, 2 to the 16 to the A1 all the way up to 19 to the A8. Good. Okay. So like I said, it's easy to check that that's 1 to 1 and on to, which tells us that the size of S is the same thing as the size of this set, but the size of this set is clearly 2 to the 8, which is equal to 256. Okay, good. Now next what I want to do is break S up into two pieces, and I'll do that in the following way. So maybe I'll call them S1 and S2. So S1 union S2 where S1 equals all numbers x in S, where x is less than 1. And then S2 is all numbers x in S, where x is bigger than 1. Good. So it's pretty clear that S is equal to S1 union S2, and we can see that S1 intersect S2 is empty. OK, good. Now, furthermore, we can define the map f from s1 to s2 uh, by f of x equals 1 over x and check that this is a bijection. So I'll leave it to you guys to check that this is a bijection. But if this is a bijective map, then what that tells us is that the size of s1 equals the size of s2. But by this equation up here, Given the fact that this is a disjoint union, we know that the size of S1 is equal to 1 half times the size of S. But the size of S1 is exactly what we're looking for. And 1 half the size of S is going to be half of 256. In other words, it's going to be 128. And that finishes our problem. And that's a good place to stop.